Hi, I'm Charles with Anicap. This is my recap for the anime 4Cut Hero. If you like my recaps, please consider subscribing. The story begins as we learn that the dark demon lord named Claudine led a group in an attack against a powerful kingdom. The battle raged on for 7 days and 7 nights, but in the end the only one that could stop them was a man known as Mr. Hero. Mr. Hero's real name is Jed, and we watched their first encounter. Claudine is surprised to see that his kingdom has sent him alone, but Jed has no words for her and instantly attacks. The demon lord is quite powerful, so she easily manages to push Jed back with her magic. Claudine wants him to join her army, but he refuses. She concludes that Jed is there to fight for humanity, but Jed interrupts her to explain that he's actually there for her treasure and the princess. This shocks her, so he repeats his intentions. We then learn more about Jed and how his dream was always to be rich and marry a princess. When he was a kid, he was told by some blonde guy that if he defeats the demon lord, he will get the treasure and rescue the kidnapped princess. Then the princess would marry him. So Jed took his family's treasure for the journey and embarked on the path of becoming a hero. Back to the present, Claudine can't believe how strange Jed's character is, but he tells her to just be quiet and contribute to his success. Jed imagines what it would be like to rescue the princess and it gives him the power to defeat the demon lord. With her defeated, Jed takes her staff as his prize and goes in search of the princess. He goes to the dungeon but is surprised to see that the kidnapped princess is actually a kidnapped prince named Ruta. Jed instantly changes his story as he now explains that he doesn't want a reward for the rescue and he did it for the kingdom. Jed gets out of there as fast as possible with a teleportation scroll, but things aren't what they seem. Jed returns home and expresses his disbelief as to why the Dark Lord kidnapped the prince instead of the princess. Just then, Jed comes down as he notices one of the princesses on a video game cover and imagines her calling out to him. Back at the kingdom, Ruta returns to the castle. He tells everyone that not only is he fine, he has discovered something interesting. Back with Jed, we see that he is disappointed to not have gotten the results he wanted on his path to becoming a hero and instead decides to enjoy the path of being a video game playing homebody. We then see someone's memory as a young girl runs away from something terrible that happened in her village. She was in complete despair but was eventually taken in by the Dark Lord. This girl admired the Dark Demon Lord very much and was devastated when she was defeated by Mr. Hero. The girl wakes up from her dream and condemns Jed for what he had done. We then learn about Claudine's exclusive knights known as the Big Four of the Dark Lord's army. They accomplished many great achievements, but in the Great War, they lost to Jed one after another, and they went their separate ways. The knight named Jaina to avenge the Dark Lord hid her identity and went to the kingdom of Catalan. Every day since then, Jaina has vowed to find Jed and avenge Claudine. However, before that, she must work hard, and she does so at a cat cafe. We then see why she worked so hard, as her past shows that she once found that Claudine's staff had been sold to a pawn shop, but she couldn't afford to buy it. Back to the present, Jaina explains that she isn't strapped for cash anymore, but she still hasn't gotten any leads on where Mr. Hero is. She assumes that he's being protected as an important figure, but we see that he arrived at the cafe. Jaina is told to wait on their new customer, and she is shocked to see that it's Jed. She instantly begins to think that he's there to finish her off, but realizes that if he wanted to kill her, then he would have done it when they last met. Jaina predicts that he must be planning something, but we hear in Jed's head that he's just glad to be at the best cafe in town. Jaina forces herself to politely ask what her customer would like and is shocked to find that he really just wants a meal. Jed has heard that they offer extra services there, so Jaina assumes that he wants something weird. However, Jed explains that he just wants to get a picture from the place and Jaina is forced by her boss to be in the pictures. Jed leaves as a happy customer, but Jaina can't believe that he didn't recognize her. Afterward, we see that a mysterious person had been watching the entire time. This person is a spy of the Catalan nation. He runs frantically as he is surprised to have found one of the big four while tracking Mr. Hero. His plan is to show the king, but he stops for a moment when he crosses paths with a much larger man also carrying a camera. This guy is clearly a weirdo though, as he uses his camera to take pictures of strangers. The spy wonders if this burly guy is a spy like him and watches as he gets beat up. The spy plans to stay out of it, but is then in disbelief as he realizes that this man is actually one of the big four named Pag. We then learn that Pag is a veteran photographer obsessed with magical girls. In the great battle as one of the demon lord's great knights, he single-handedly defeated the most powerful female knights of the Rose Order. As the war ended, he was able to publish a photo album. Elsewhere, we find the captain of the Rose Order and she is furious at Pag when she discovers this album. She is upset about being humiliated and annoyed to be getting so many fan letters. The captain vows to get her revenge on Pag one day and can't believe her eyes when she sees him being chased outside her window. Back at Jed's house, Jed is annoyed to see that Pag has come to visit him. Jed tries to get rid of him as he always comes to Jed when he is on the run, but Pag points out that they are old friends. 
Jed points out that he isn't friends with the Big Four, which hurts Pat greatly, but Jed reminds him that they were enemies in the war. Jed eventually gives in one last time and tells Pag that they can play video games later. Jed warns Pag not to touch his precious collection, but Pag tells him that he's just going to look, and is stunned when he sees Jed's picture with Jaina. Pat asks him about it and Jed takes a moment to figure out what he is talking about. Jed eventually remembers and Pag assumes that the two of them must really like each other. In the kingdom, the king is shocked to find that Mr. Hero is in contact with the Big Four, and is told that Prince Ruda was the one who issued the order to have Mr. Hero followed. The king can only wonder what Ruda is up to and questions if he is trying to trick them into killing Mr. Hero. One of the generals determines that Mr. Hero must have teamed up with the Big Four, since it's impossible for him to have defeated all of them and the Demon Lord on his own. The king is convinced and instantly issues an order to have all his knights seek out and arrest Jed the Hero. Then the next morning they will execute one of the Big Four, the one known as the Fallen Hero, Rock Barkhead. In a prison, some guards are attacked and a mysterious person tells Rock that he's going to be executed. Rock can easily tell that it's the Prince and Prince Ruda explains that he can help Rock return to the Dark Void to revitalize the Dark Lord's army. Ruda offers to be a hostage, but Rock is completely dejected. He has given up and declares himself a failure. Ruda becomes furious, but Rock reminds him that Claudine is dead and he can do nothing on his own. The Prince decides that he will continue with his plan on his own and bids farewell to Rock. Elsewhere, Jed asks Pag about Rock, and he explains that Rock is the eldest son of a sword family. He is incredibly strong, but he is said to have a sister that is even more powerful. His reason for joining the Dark Lord's army is unknown, but it has something to do with the legend of the Black Dragon Dal Toro. Jed is familiar with the legend as it states that twins are born in the Kingdom of Cartland. One of them will be sacrificed to the Black Dragon in exchange for his eternal protection. Jed has realized that since the end of the war, there has been a horrible magic emanating from the royal city, and states that there is something wrong with this country. After their game, Jed offers to get some food, but Pag clearly has no shame and asks for a whole bunch of stuff. Jed is quick to point out that he isn't a servant, and this isn't Pag's home. Just then, his door is smashed open and the guys are shocked to see Jaina. Jaina is there to get her revenge, but can't believe her eyes when she sees the two guys together. Pag desperately tries to clear things up by stating that they are just friends, but this infuriates her even more. She comes to the conclusion that Pag must have been the one to lead Jed into the castle during the Great War, and Jed confirms it. Pag must clear things up again by explaining that he was tricked. Jed distracted him while he was standing guard all alone, and Jed attacked him. Jaina has had enough of Jed defeating them over and over, and is determined to give him a taste of defeat. Jed tries to stop her by explaining that the war is over, and he doesn't want to be their enemy anymore. Jaina is desperate for revenge, so she continues her relentless attack and forces Jed back. Jed dodges all her powerful attacks with ease, but is shocked when he hears the voice of one of his princess figurines. He imagines her calling out for his help, and Jed's hero instincts instantly kick in. Jaina is amazed by his speed, and Jed explains that it's rude to touch other people's things. He throws her weapon back, and Jaina can instantly feel his power. She creates some distance so she can continue her attack, but Jed prepares himself as well. Shockingly though, Jed only uses a flick of his finger to destroy all her weapons. Despite his overwhelming power, Jaina decides to continue fighting, but is quickly humbled and she realizes the true power of the hero. Jed is upset as he realizes that Jaina seems to think that he used dirty tricks to defeat Claudine. This is insulting, so he exclaims that they both exerted their best in their duel. It was a life and death struggle for their dreams and dignity. Jed points out that Jaina came to his house to end his life and assumes that that means she's prepared for death. This comes off as a threat, but Jed explains that the war is over and there's no longer a need for anyone to die. This stuns Jaina as she thinks back to a time when Clydeen once told her that if possible, she hoped no one dies from the war. She begins to cry, so Pag scolds him for hurting a girl's feelings. Jed offers to let her beat him up, but only on the condition that the revenge ends there. He promises not to fight back, but secretly prepares some defense. He assumes that he will be safe, but he is wrong, as Jaina's punch is a family technique called Piercing Shield. Jaina makes it clear that she will only be taking a break from revenge, and still vows to kill Jed one day. Jed tells her that she is being stubborn, but senses something and tells the two that they are surrounded. A check outside reveals that there are at least 100 soldiers. They are clearly the king's forces, so Jed assumes that he is not the target. Jaina says that no one followed her, so they can't be after her either. That being the case, Jed signals to Jaina that if there is trouble, then they simply need to just give Pag to them. Outside, a mage named Zair prepares the soldiers for an attack, but they are shocked to see that their targets have come out. Jed states that he has helped capture the Big Four and tells them to take Pag away. Zare thanks him for his help, but then shockingly states that they know Jed colluded with the forces of the Dark Lord. 
Because of this, the king has ordered that Mr. Hero be brought to justice. Jed tries to explain, but Zare couldn't care less and uses a spell called Infinite Gravity. However, Zare is shocked to see that Jed can still move a little and commends the great Mr. Hero for even being able to stand up. Jed shows that he can do more than just stand up though and uses a spell called Magic Reversal to bring the entire army to its knees. Zare can't believe that Jed is able to use such high level magic since he is just a swordsman. Jed explains that he never said he was a swordsman in the first place and he only uses swords because he thinks they look cool. Zare stops Jed's magic and prepares another unit to attack. Jed has planned for this well ahead of time and uses the trick he had up his sleeve this entire time, running away. Jed blames the members of the Big Four for what is happening, but their argument is interrupted when they are attacked by a hammer-wielding maniac. This crazy lady is the captain of the Rose Order. She can't believe that Mr. Hero has sided with the Big Four and demands that Jed hand over Pag. Jed doesn't even think twice about it and leaves the giant mountain of muscles. This girl is ready to end Pag's life, but Pag is more concerned with taking his precious pictures. The captain's backup arrives, but she is shocked by what they are wearing. She recalls how the members of her team convinced her to put on a ridiculous dress to catch Pag off guard, and they said it wouldn't be a big deal since they would all dress that way. None of them are wearing dresses though, and it's because it was far too embarrassing. Pag is busy having his own personal photo shoot, so the captain initiates the fight. Jed and Jaina run into a couple soldiers, but Arbo uses body enhancement magic to send them flying. Another guard gets knocked out when he uses speed increase magic, and Jaina just now realizes that Jed is really a mage. They evade a whole bunch of soldiers, but Jed must quickly use defense magic when they are attacked by a huge attack. The attacker is Zare, and he just wants them to give themselves up calmly. The entire kingdom is hunting him down now, so there is no chance that he will be able to escape. Jaina fears that there are far too many enemies, but Jed reveals that he has a way to escape. He has a teleport ring, but there is something about the destination that makes him hesitant to use it. Jaina doesn't hesitate though, and they are teleported. Zare uses tracking magic to find them, but is shocked when he realizes where they have gone. Jaina wonders where they are, but Jed doesn't want to say, and he is greeted by a giant dragon. Jaina is terrified by the beast, and shocked when Jed refers to it as his master. The dragon reminds Jed that he still needs to be punished, but he begs her to calm down. Jaina then loses her mind when she watches the dragon just consume him. The dragon just spits him out though, and we see that she tied him up. The dragon supposedly just wants to talk, so she reveals her human form, and we learn that her name is Lexi. Lexi takes them to her house, and her first question is about what Jed did with her horn. Jed shakes in fear and points out that since it's her horn, he wouldn't know anything about it. Lexi uses a truth-telling spell on him though, and our boy quickly spills the beans. He heard that dragon's horns contain powerful magic, so he sold it to a noble and made a whole bunch of money. Lexi gives him a good beating for his actions, and Jaina can only watch without any words. She definitely approves of Jed getting beaten up though, and Lexi wonders who she is. Lexi gets even more upset when she assumes that Jed has become a man, and continues her relentless beating. Lexi remembers how Jed used to be such a good young man, and wonders how he could grow up to be like he is now. Jaina thinks that Jed might also be a dragon, but he isn't and he just lived with Lexi before he became a hero. Lexi realizes now what went wrong with her sweet boy, and remembers that it all started when a certain guy persuaded him to become the hero. His name was Godel. He was the one that told Jed that he needed to defeat the demon lord and save the princess. He also told Jed that he would marry the princess and it would be the peak of his life. The boy's imagination ran with it and he would go on to tell his master of his decision to become the hero. Jed tries to remind her that she agreed to it, but she doesn't care and Lexi won't let him go this time. Lexi thinks it's far too dangerous out in the world and she worries that he might get charmed by some temptress like the blue haired girl in her room. Jed thought that Lexi would bring him back home after he left the first time, but Lexi thought that he went to Catalan to avoid her. Jed had no idea and she explains that she can't even enter Catalan because there's a tricky guy there. Back in Catalan, Prince Ruta calls Rock an idiot as his execution is being prepared. He was once the pride of the people and known as the Northern Hero. However, he pledged allegiance to the Demon Lord so the king has ordered his execution. Several people have come to watch and they condemn him for being the Demon Lord's lapdog. Just then, Rock is shocked to see his sister named Gil. She is a master swordswoman and the eldest daughter of the Barkhead family. Gil has been proficient in swordsmanship since childhood and always vowed to marry a man stronger than her. She defeated the master swordsman of the older generation at only 15 years old, becoming renowned across the world. She then traveled the world challenging different types of masters and still has never tasted defeat. 
For this reason, she is still single at the age of 35. The guards realize that they are in danger, but it's too late as Gil has already begun her attack. Her power is insane and she greets her brother. She reveals that their old man sent her there and he assumes that his father wants to save him. Gil gives him a shocking reality check though. Their father sent her because he doesn't want to entrust others with the elimination of the shame of their family. It's clear to Rock now that their father hasn't forgiven him for joining the Demon Lord, but Gil explains that has nothing to do with it. In fact, the more notorious Rock is, the better, since it elevates their family's reputation. The reason why their father won't forgive Rock is because he lost. He was soundly defeated by an unknown young brat, and he tarnished the family name. Gil asks for any last words he might have, and he simply acknowledges his failure, especially since Claudine's life was taken. He is prepared for her to end him, so she slices right through him. Gil actually just frees him and reminds him that he once had dreams that he wanted to fulfill. She doesn't think that Claudine's demise should mean the end of his life, and tells him that he can lead the Demon Lord's army himself. Gil reminds him that no one in the world can beat him except for her, and she believes in him. Just then, the elite guards called the Golden Order arrive. Captain Talon wants Rock eliminated, but they are in big trouble as Gil gives her brother a sword. Rock has a new outlook on life and instantly wipes the floor with these so-called elite guards. Captain Talon tries to put up a good fight, but Rock destroys him with one single swing from the sword. Rock is even surprised by the power and realizes that Gil handed him the ancestral sword of the Barkhad family. Rock thinks that the sword is too powerful, but Gil lets him have it. She thinks he needs it more than she does, and her little toothpick weapon is enough for her. Rock remembers that their father sent her to end his life, but Gil says that this isn't the first time she has disobeyed him. Also, she got the feeling that their father knew she would rescue him instead. She welcomes him to return home whenever he wants, and Rock tells Claudine that he is back. Afterwards, Rock prepares for a fight when he overhears a confrontation. He is surprised to see that it's Prag getting pushed around by a bunch of girls, and he frees his old pal. He tells Prag to come with him back to the Dark Lord's castle because he intends on becoming the new Demon Lord. Prag wonders if he is planning to wage another war, and Rock explains that he once made a promise to Claudine. He said he would destroy the entire Catalan Empire, but first they must retrieve Claudine's staff. Rock follows his senses to where the staff is and is excited when he realizes that they found where Gina lives. The staff is there as well and he has a memory of when Claudine introduced him to Gina. She was only a little rump back then and Rock was in charge of teaching her swordsmanship. They became very close and Claudine forced him to take a picture together. Rock wishes he knew where she was and Pag simply explains that she is with Mr. Hero. Pag catches him up on everything that happened and tells Rock that Jed is actually a pretty nice guy, so they all get along pretty well. Rock is not only shocked by this information, he fears the worst. Elsewhere, the king is furious to hear that Jed and Gina fled together. On top of that, Rock was saved by a master swordswoman before he could be beheaded. As if that weren't bad enough, Pag also got away with Rock. The king is completely dejected, but his right-hand man named Mr. Rupal tells him that they have to focus. They need to find a solution before a certain person appears. Just then, Prince Ruta returns to recommend that they call it a national crisis. The situation is really bad, but the king doesn't think it's that serious and feels like they can handle it. However, Rupal reminds the king of how bad the situation is. They have been betrayed by Mr. Hero and they could be attacked by the Demon Lord's army at any time. He is really upset and wonders why their guardian, the Black Dragon Dardo, hasn't appeared yet. The king tells him to shut up, but it's too late. Some ghostly being appears to tell Ruta to obey the agreement and shockingly calls him Dardo. Ruta laughs like a psychopath as a beam of light blasts out of the castle. Ruta transforms into a gigantic dragon and we learn that he is the Black Dragon Dardo. The king tells Rupal that he was never meant to see this and silences him. Ruta is a dragon now and sends a message to Lexi, he is coming after her. Rock spots Dardo from the city and Dardo instantly takes off to go after Lexi. At Lexi's house, she tells Jed not to go anywhere. She won't untie him because he will just try to run away, but he doesn't need to worry since the Catalan army wouldn't dare come to her home. Just then, she senses that something has entered her barrier and she must instantly act as Dardo has used an insanely powerful attack. Lexi is concerned about Jed and she sees that this level of power is hurting him. Lexi's rage goes out of control and she vows to make whoever is attacking pay the price as she turns into her dragon form. She instantly attacks Dardo and shows her insane strength right off the bat. Gina can't believe what she is seeing and Jed explains that his master is a big shot even among the dragon clan. Just then everyone is shocked as Dardo somehow managed to survive and even seems to be healing. 
Dardo explains that she will have to try much harder than that, otherwise he will just eat her alive. Lexi manages to get the cannibalistic dragon off of her and blows a hole right through him. Unfortunately, he just heals up again and shows that his skin has some kind of acidic effect. Dardo taunts her a bit and Jed realizes that Dardo's not just using regular healing magic. He fears that Dardo will have the upper hand if the fight drags on, and he tells Jaina that he's going to save Lexi. Jaina thinks that he is being ridiculous since a human obviously has no chance fighting against a dragon, especially one this powerful. She points out that if it wasn't for Lexi, they would have been evaporated just a second ago. Jed agrees that he has no chance of winning by attacking directly, but he comes up with an idea. He tells Jaina to hold on to his pendant and to run away as far as she can. There's no time to stop him as he leaves and she wonders what the pendant does. Jed then shockingly appears right at the center of the fight. He realized that Dardo was able to attack them directly while they were inside Lexi's house, so he determines that it doesn't rely on visual sense. The little ghost creature thing is whispering in Dardo's ear and he tells him to end Jed's life. Dardo tries to eat him but Jed quickly gets away and uses a command to force Lexi to transform back into her human form. He thinks there's only one way to escape Dardo's tracking and uses a spell called Disguise Transfer. Dardo is shocked by all the spells and Jed tells him goodbye as he seemingly disappears. Dardo is amused by the game of hide and seek but says that it won't last for long. Jed instantly appears by Jaina and he shockingly chops off Lexi's other horn. Of course everyone is shocked and Lexi is at a loss for words when her magical power nearly hits zero. Dardo is furious as he can no longer sense her power and wonders how they could have escaped. Jed reveals that his plan was to conceal Lexi's power so that Dardo would think that they escaped. His plan worked perfectly but Lexi is furious as she points out that he didn't actually conceal her power, he eliminated it. Jed points out that her power is just far too insane so he had to resort to unconventional methods. Just then, Ruta's dragon form begins to melt away. He questions why they ran away from him and wonders why they didn't just end his life instead. Elsewhere we find that Rock has returned to the Demon Lord's castle. There he finds the last of the big four of the Dark Lord named Karn. Karn sits at the throne and seems to have some disciples at his side. We then watch as rain pours down on Ruta and Jed gets a determined look on his face. Thanks for watching my recap. Subscribe and ring the notification bell for other recaps.